All right, so we're gonna start off with the AKG C214. Now, I don't have a ton of experience with this mic, but I do have a lot of experience with its big brother, the AKG C414. And I love that microphone. It might be one of my favorite microphones. In fact, I put it on a list as one of my favorite microphones. I think it was two on my top five studio microphones. Now, why? Because the AKG C414 is extremely versatile. You can put it in front of anything and it's gonna sound good. One of the other reasons it's so versatile is because of the fact that it has so many different polar patterns. Not only does it have so many different polar patterns, you can go in between those two polar patterns. So you have endless possibilities. Now, unlike the C414, this is not as true for the 214. Unless you're gonna need to record something that is both in front of you and behind you, or you're gonna need to record something that's all around the microphone, it's probably not gonna be an issue. Now you do get some stuff with the C214. You're gonna get a negative 20 dB pad, and you're also gonna get a roll off that's gonna start at around 160 Hertz. Now, in my experience, that's a pretty aggressive roll off. You're gonna take a lot of low end out whenever you do that. So let's hear how that sounds. This is me speaking into the microphone with no roll off at all. Get. Yeah. And this is me speaking into the microphone with all that bass rolled off after the 160 Hertz mark. Also, just for fun, let's uh, let's do the pad. Hello, 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 hello. That is really quiet. Now, as you know, if you've been on this channel before, if you're subscribed, hello subscribers, the Rode NT1 is the microphone that we compare basically any other microphone against. It's not because it's the most amazing microphone in the world, although I adore this microphone. It's because it's the microphone I own. I borrow the rest of these. But the Rode NT1 is known for a few key things. First, a really smooth mid-range. That means it's gonna have a lot of low mid-range presence to it. The Rode NT1 is also known for being one of the quietest microphones. And what I mean by quietest microphones is its self noise, meaning every microphone is gonna have a little bit of self noise to it. It's gonna produce some small amount of signal just from being on. The Rode NT1 is often touted as the quietest microphone on the market, which is great for things like voiceover. It's also known for its really robust build quality, uh, its dependability, and the fact that it has a 10 year warranty. Super awesome. Now, one other key factor with the Rode NT1 is the fact that it is called an extremely flat microphone. If you look at the common frequency response you find in this microphone, you're gonna see essentially a flat line with a small boost in the high end. Now, I am increasingly starting to call this into question. I'm not sure if I believe it. And that's not to say this microphone doesn't sound good, but I have noticed a few things that aren't in line with that frequency response, namely its sibilance, the way it treats S sounds. This that sound is rather harsh for a microphone that is supposed to be completely flat and not boost the high end too much. Now that's not to say this microphone isn't good, it's amazing, I love it. I think it sounds great, especially on spoken word, certain voices, and acoustic guitar, I love it on horns, I love it on a lot of things. But with the amount of experience that I have with this microphone, those are the weak points I've been able to notice. One thing I've also noticed with the Rode NT1 is it does not reject the room around it better than a lot of the other competitors it's competing against, you're gonna hear a little bit more room noise than you will with something like the 214 uh, or something even like the uh, AT2020 or the AT2035. Basically, just make sure you're recording in a relatively quiet environment for the microphone in order to function at optimum levels. Now, even though the C214 has more of a boosted high end than the Rode NC1 does, it also is remarkably good at controlling the sibilance. The, tss, the S sounds, don't hurt like at all on this microphone. It's really impressive the fact that it can give you a lot of high-end presence, but at the same time not making your voice sound too overly harsh, especially those sounds like the S's that can get a little taxing on your ears. My criticism of the 214 is the fact that it lacks a little bit of that lower mid-range, and that gives your voice that deep, sort of a radio friendly presence. I find that the microphone complements the upper mid range a lot more. And if you have a voice that it sits well in that range, or if you have a voice that you wanna boost more of the high end to, the AKG C214 might be the mic for you. So maybe for low voices that are doing specifically voiceover, this might not be the microphone for you. But again, this is such a glittering generality. Uh, it's really gonna depend on your own independent vocal range, which makes, 
reviewing microphones rather hard because I can recommend you microphones all day based off of the actual frequency response and based off of what I think is gonna work, but it's really gonna come down to you hearing the microphone on your own. And I realize that's not very helpful. Not everyone has the opportunity to see these microphones in person and test on their own individual voice. But again, I just wanna remind you, I can give you general trends, but your specific voice is gonna depend a lot on your specific voice. Now let's take a look at the frequency response charts just to confirm what I've been saying. Uh, you can take a look at how they compare. And since I talked about the frequency response chart of the Rode NT1 maybe not being completely accurate, let's also put up this other frequency response chart I found for the Rode NT1. And you can take a look for yourself which one you think sounds more accurate on my voice. So conclusions. For the purpose of this section of the video, the voiceover section of this microphone review, I still prefer the Rode NT1 for voiceover. Even though it has a harsher sibilance and even though it has a little bit more room noise with it, I find two things really useful for voiceover with this microphone. I love the low mid-range response, which represents my relatively low mid-range voice really well and it complements it nicely. And I love how quiet the microphone is, which is going to make it great for voiceover. You're not going to hear the microphone at all. And it might not be super obvious when you're just listening to the microphone now, but when it comes to boosting and compressing the signal afterwards, working it in post-processing, you might bring out that self noise more whenever you go through that chain. That's not gonna be a problem with a microphone that has a lower self noise, or it's at least gonna be less of a problem. Now the C214 has, like I said before, an amazing upper mid-range control to it while still not being sibilant, which is an amazing feat. I love that about this microphone. If you're looking for a microphone that's gonna add upper high-end presence in a really controlled, really elegant way, this is the microphone I would recommend for you. And also, when it comes to build quality, this is a tank. The Rode NT1 is made out of some really nice metals, but the C214, I was impressed when I took it out of the box. It feels good. And in general, if we're talking about a microphone that's more suited for singing, and I want something that has that sparkly high end, I might reach for the C214 first. That's because the high end range of the song and the mix the AKG might suit that more. It's naturally gonna be brighter, so maybe the vocal will naturally sit brighter on top of the mix. Look, obviously, these are all generalizations. Every voice is gonna be unique, and it honestly sucks that not every buyer can listen to these microphones independently to make their decision. Buyers have to look to people like me in order to hear the sounds on the internet and make their decision from there. I try and give you a general guideline on how these two would look, in my mixing session uh, and how I would use them, but these things might change once I hear your independent voice. So like I said before, these are just recommendations based off of my own experience on listening to these two microphones. They're just generalizations. Don't take my word as gospel. Do your own research out there to see which one works for you. And if you can get your hands on one of these two before you try it, I know that's not always the easiest thing to do for everyone, but it could help you make your decision even more. So with that, that is the spoken word part of this review. Let's go into a vocal test and then a blind guitar test. If you've been on the channel before, you know Carolina Alabao. She's the vocalist who does honestly most of the vocals on these channels. Carolina is an amazing singer. Please go check out her Instagram whenever you get the chance. After that, we got a blind guitar test to see which one you prefer on acoustic guitar. So let's go. Yes, when I'm de cada palabra ya suena el silencio de cada mirada ya no más paredes de cristal que agrietan el clamor de la igualdad y así el gran abismo que han creado en ti ya suena el silencio de cada palabra ya suena el silencio de cada mirada que al pasar fija y sin pensar que nuestra piel de miedo temblará. 
¿Por qué queréis golpear la fe? Romper la idea de poder vivir todos de pie. Okay, which one did you end up liking better? I think the NT1 because uh, the 214 it's more high high end, more airy. Um, I can hear more the and the and the S's and it has less body. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. well, on an unrelated note, this is the last time Carolina is going to be in a video for a while because we're moving to different cities. So I know. everyone, say goodbye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>that was all i hope this was informative if you'd like follow me on instagram at real audio haze if you want to work with me on a project on a mixing project or if you want to take lessons you can email me at real audio haze at gmail.com and with that i will see you in the next video my friend goodbye goodbye